This is your election headquarters, and the breaking news this afternoon is that Professor Nana Jen Opokwajiman is the running mate uh, for the NDC in December 2024 general election. We will take you back to the NDC headquarters to hear from the national chairman of the party, of course, from the flag bearer, John Domani Bahama. But why Jane Opoku? I'm sure Evans Spencer has some answers for me, and he's, he's head of our political artists. Evans again, why Jane, and why the central region again? You know, we, ha we have to just drill this down to the numbers. It's a, it's a numbers game. Who brings you the most numbers? And we've been trying to dig into when Jane and Opoku Juman has been the, the running mate the last time compared to the other previous times we've had a running mate for the NDC from the central region. What has been the comparison? The NDC has a very interesting history where they tend to almost instinctively go to the central region when they're looking for a, a running mate, all the way back to uh, the, the late Professor Mills, Mills, right? And then you come to Park Wissi, Mr. Arthur. Right. Two, two terms, he represented that region on the ticket of the, the party as a running mate to John Dramani Mahama. And then John, John Mani Mahama himself continues the tradition by appointing uh, Nana Opoku uh, the last time in 2020. So there, there's room to compare, okay? For those of us who have been wondering, so why is he maintaining her? Because I, I, the argument has been, but he didn't, she didn't really do well for the party. Exactly. In terms of the votes, in terms of the numbers, because her primary constituency is a central region. And a central region is important because traditionally, it, we've known it to be a swing region, a bare weather region. With the exception of 2020, the central region has consistently told us who the eventual winner of the of the of the national elections will be but that changed in 2020 but let's go back a bit and on the screen here you see uh, elting the story of professor mills and pakwisi mr arthur and uh, you know, professor nana juno pokwajima uh, on your on your screens there that that should tell you a story you want to isolate this middle part and just focus on 1996 you focus on 2012 2016 and 2020. now mills in that particular you know, region, when it comes to the uh, presidential performance, we are saying presidential performance, we are not suggesting that he was the face on the ballot, but there's a reason why the running mates are chosen from whichever part of the country. The success of the ticket is also his success. It's, it's the, the failure of the ticket is your failure. It's a reason why when you look at the northern region, for example, Bamiya is credited for the swing nature of that place in terms of the ability to, to flip it. Um, for the for the MPP. And the same with Jinan Opukajman. Some people who criticize her say, when they look at the performance in the central region for the NDC, she didn't do enough. But you go back to 1996, and you see that 55.20% is what uh, Professor Atamels brought to the ticket. And you people credit him for that, because that's his home region. If you compare that, for example, to Pakwisi Misa Atta, who was just at 52.5%, uh, He's, he set a record in terms of those running mates for the party from the, from the central region. I'm talking about the, the late president. Then you also come to 2016. They dip significantly with Pakwisi Misa Arthur on the ticket as a, as a running mate. Significantly, from 52% to 43.40%. Uh, then in comes, obviously, Professor Jaina Nopokwa who manages in that particular elections last year, helping John Dramani Mahama climb up to 45.90%. Now, if you look at that trajectory, presidential-wise, you say, well, she brought some momentum to the ticket. Because from the 2016, if you compare those two elections, from 2016 of a significant dip, and this was a, the lowest they've gone to in the central region in 2016, if you, if you take out the, all the elections from 1996, it was, a, it was the second lowest they've been. I mean, the lowest they've been in that particular uh, region in 20, 2004, right? So this was a significant low in 2016. And then you have Jaina Nopokwa time in 2020 where they begin to climb back up. Two percentage point increase. And that is the momentum on the side of the, of the, of the opposition party. So at the presidential level, if you're really looking at where they've come from in 2016 to 2020, you, you are right to say that John Mahama, in looking at the numbers presidentially, is looking at momentum on his side with hair on the ticket compared to what they, where they were in 2016. And so that could be an argument to maintain her. If we are climbing up, as you see the line here doing so, if we are climbing up, um, as you see here, 
Why do you want to reverse that particular trend? You want to continue that trend. And that possibly explains the reason why we've seen John Mahama keeping hair. But that is a presidential. The, let's do the comparison between MPP and NDC in terms of what is happening. Again, look at Jinnan Opokwajiman in, in this picture here. You see how from 2016, she closes the gap. She closes that gap a bit more. And that is why you see that line beginning to converge, dragging the MPP down whilst the NDC line grows. Again, pure numbers tell you that if you're calculating this and looking at you know, numbers, so Jalen Opokujuman had actually increased your fortunes in the central region with hair on the ticket. That is just what the numbers tell us. Closing that gap there was important. John Mahama possibly looked at this and says, momentum on my side, I want to keep it. Maybe this margin there closes even further the central region at the presidential level, and we can overtake the MPP there. But I don't want to introduce an entirely new face because that will also now become an area where it's unpredictable. At least now you have, you have a known quantity. A known quantity in Jinan Opokwajiman with momentum on his side in the central region to assist you. But let's look at the parliamentary, uh, Elting. The parliamentary story is the strongest one for her. Because in 2016, it was a bloody outcome for the NDC in the central region parliamentary-wise. They lost 19 of the seats there to the MPP. And MPP secured 19 of that. They only managed to pick up four seats in the central region. That is a, a, a significant defeat there when it comes to the parliamentary numbers. Considering that in 2012, they were holding on to 16 seats. So this is a story that Jomama was looking at. And then in comes Professor Jinnan in 2020. And what happens? They flip that script on its head. They move from 19 down to 13 up. Right? That tells you the story. 19 down to 13 up. From, from that position, you look at it and you ask yourself, well, if you really want to credit the, the, the running mate coming from her own constituency, and I'm looking at, I'm talking to constituency and operationalizing that to mean the region, these numbers should be numbers that should count in assessing her suitability for the ticket for 2024. And if you look at it, my argument is it is about momentum. If you can flip this with hair on the ticket in the central region where she hails from, from 19 down to 13 up, that is one that you can pitch. And possibly today, before the Council of Elders, before the National Executive Committee, people will ask the question, show us the numbers. And these numbers speak for itself, LT. Right. So, I mean, the key question is, it's always been a north-south ticket. Regardless of which way which, which we look at it, either the presidential candidates from the south, the, the running mate is from the north, or vice versa. Question really is why the central region? Why has the NDC always taken this particular slot to the central region? Why not the other regions? Why not, for example, the voter region, which is reputed to be the World Bank of the NDC? Why the central region all the time? Yeah, but you raise a very important point. And, and, and one of the answers to that, obviously, Elting, is because of central region's own architecture as a bellwether region, a region that determines and predicts the outcome of the presidential race almost all the time, with the exception of 2020, which I insist is an outlier. I believe very strongly that this year, the central region will return to type in terms of its uh, swing nature, ability to tell you who is going to win the national elections. And that is why they keep going there uh, for the MPP. And they haven't, they, they change when, of course, we're looking at uh, a, a, so for, for the NDC, Either they have a presidential candidate from the central region or a running mate from the central region. So the times when they haven't gone there is when they've had John Evans and Tamils there. And of course, he himself is from there. So they went to somebody from the north. But for me, that will be an, one of the reasons why they keep going to the central region, right? Has it always been the case that when they've been there, it has actually helped them um, electorally in terms of the votes? Not entirely. Because as you see on your screens here, I want to go back to the presidential story. As you see on your screen there, yeah, they had, um, Paco said Mr. Afa, and they lost by a historic margin in 2016. So it didn't quite pan out. But that, again, did not stop them from going back there, Elton. That's the valid question you asked. Going back there to Nana Jinopokajima, maybe they were estimating that they still need a particular region on their side. And they've been very consistent with that, right? And again, if you go back to even Mills' own story, um, he was on the ticket in, in 
1996, and they won. Of course, J uh, that time Rawlings was a very strong, uh, uh, you know, presidential candidate himself, the president at the time, and on the ticket. So he brought a lot to, to bear. So the party is looking at definitely the swing, um, you know, capabilities and architecture of the central region in making that decision. We wait to see if that pounds out again in 2020. How well she does in that region uh, on the ticket now with JM bringing the vote from the central region to the party. We have what? Four regions we know are Swing, Great Accra, uh, Central. Uh, we also have the situation of Western, Western region uh, as, as Swing regions. And yeah, you, so if, if that's the argument, why aren't they going to the Western region, for example, because it's also in the South? Right. Why, why aren't they going uh, to, why are they staying in the Great Accra region because it's in the South? It's a very interesting question indeed, and the party needs to explain that. Apart from the subject of its swing nature, it, it's very hard to see why they keep going there. And, and has it served them right? Well, it served them right in terms of votes mm. under Professor Mills in 1996, as you see on your screens here. It served them well, again, in 2012, but it didn't, it didn't serve them at all properly in, 19, in 2016. It, it, was, it was a poor showing there. You come to 2020, they begin to climb back up on the, on the, on the, on the, on the back of maintaining uh, Nano Pokwajima. But, but again, um, Elting, let's consider this. You've had for the NDC a president, a vice president first, and then subsequently becomes a president who dies whilst he's in office. Mm. Okay. And then you come to Pakwisi Misa Atta, who shortly after the party lost power, also dies, right? And then you have to replace him with somebody. There's a sense in which the party is also considering that, that history, that, that tragic history mm. of people that have nominated either as their you know, presidential candidates or as their uh, running mates who, who die, mm. right? Either whilst in office or shortly after they've left power. And you want to go back to the region again and say, we acknowledge that. Parties in Ghana tend to reward one, the families of those who lose, you know, key stalwarts. I, I take an example of the, 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 the minister for, the MP for Ifantaman, whose husband died. A case also for the MPP in um, Kumeu. In Kumeu. And then, of course, Ayawaso was well gone. There's a long tradition of parties saying true to either the spouses of the people who lose, who lose power, but also the region and the constituencies themselves. And I believe that may have influenced that decision also. To have two strong people, mm -hmm. either as a presidential candidate themselves, the president himself, and the vice presidential uh, material who, who die, it's a, it's a very strong case to be made. Going back there to show the people that, yes, we are loyal to you and we'll come. But the question is, will the people reward them? But again, Evans, the, I mean, the, the figures may play to your advantage. But in terms of her maturity politically, will you mm. say that she's ready for the game? I mean, in 2016, a lot of people would say that the reason why the MPP won overwhelmingly was the Baumia factor. Professor well, Nana Jinopokwajima, her weakness as identified by her opponents, the fact that, I mean, she, didn't, she was not able to take on the MPP as they wanted her to, looking at the track record of Baumia. Four years on, will you say that she's matured onto the game and is ready to take on? That is the biggest, actually, sales, uh, Elton. I haven't seen that over, over that period. And as we know, uh, when the current vice president, who obviously is a, is a presidential candidate for the NPP, emerged also, remember, he also was, was not as vocal, was not as assertive when he was president in 2008. And then on the back of the 2012 elections, when they went to the Supreme Court, he, he came to his own. He sort of, you know, significantly matured as a politician. Over, over the period, though, you can't say the same for Jane Nanopo Kwajiman Prof. You, you can't say that. From 2020 to 2024, I haven't seen her own her own stage. I haven't seen her take on the, the opponents in the way that we saw a, a Baumia, for example, do. So in terms of that political maturity and coming to his own, her own, you, you can't say that. I mean, still, she, if, for example, you hold a vice presidential debate right, right now, uh, we, we don't know who uh, the Baumia was, was, is going to choose, but you can bet that individual will be, will be a formidable uh, candidate, kind of, considering all the names that we know. Can she hold her own, for example, in the debate? Right? Of course she can. She's, she's an academic, right? But in terms of the political maneuvering, the assertiveness politically, and to, and to wheel and deal on the stage, and to take and, and, and give back, we haven't seen that. And that definitely is a weakness. Right? That definitely is the weakness. Does that appeal to those who want something different? Maybe. 
right? People are accustomed to the way polit politics is done and the way you, you should carry yourself about and be able to throw mud and take mud. She, she wouldn't do that, we know. That's not, that's not what she offers. So would she, for example, appeal to the middle class voting voter who doesn't want that? Maybe. Mm -hmm. But that is definitely one that the party will have to work on. They don't have enough time, and she's been maintained, as we know. I don't see that changing between now and December. December, John Mahama will have to do a, a, a lot more of the heavy lifting together with the others when it comes to campaigning uh, on the field. We'll, we'll be taking you back to the NDC's headquarters. We're waiting for that signal, uh, for that news conference, and we shall bring it live to you here on Join Us. This is indeed your election headquarters, and you have to stay with us because we've got uh, every angle of the story covered for you. Now, Evans, the other issue is a slogan that the, 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 the MPP, they've been propagating. And they use the word Dadanwa, mm. meaning we know John Mahama, we know Jeno Poku Ajiman. How do they lift themselves off the stack? I mean, Dadanwa to suggest that there's nothing new coming from these individuals. How oh. do they lift themselves off the stack and present, you know, to Ghanaians uh, credibility, one, uh, people that, that can be trusted to deliver. How do they shake themselves off that tag, which is suggesting that they have nothing new to offer? Well, that, that, that for me, again, is another challenge because you, you wanted to refresh. If you wanted to refresh the ticket, then you can't do much about John Dramani Mahama because the party wants him. They've maintained him. But you could have done something about the running mate to refresh the ticket. But as, what they've done is to simply say, well, we are coming back with what we have. That plays into the hands of the opponents, your main contenders in the MPP, which the slogan they began, they began to throw about there. Your question is how they do it. Well, it's going to be a challenge. Um, Aydanan Opoku Ajiman grows out of her skin and becomes a dominant force on the campaign trail, um, which, I, and I said, I don't see that happening between now and December. Or John Mahama himself finds a way to, to, to give us a setting energy and by the way, what they have done is the eight-year curse on your side, right? In other words, and the, the current economic circumstances on your side, right? So, and as we've seen, in the, in the second terms, anytime you get to the eighth year, what tends to happen is incumbent parties, their traditional base, are not as, it's not as energized as what you find in the opposition party's uh, base, in terms of the energy and enthusiasm going to the polls. And that, for me, is what they can count on. Because historically, if you look at the, over the period, when you look at, say, the story of Rawlings himself in 2000, they lost out. Mm. They lost out in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the runoff, as you know. Primarily because, and in, in those years when you, you hit your eighth, eighth year, and your second term is about to expire, your ability to galvanize your base as an incumbent is important, right? But it isn't the case that incumbent loses the elections. The incumbent actually loses the elections. The opposition party will simply have to galvanize their base to come to, to, come to, to come to the play. Now, in 2000, you saw that story emerge where the NDC uh, could not bring their, their people traditionally to the poll, mm. but the N MPP were galvanized at the base. Same story happens in 2008, where the MPP had everything going for it, and the economy wasn't as bad as it is now, but they lost in the runoff. Why? Because as the incumbent party, they simply lost out in terms of getting their people to the polls. M NDC will be counting on that happening this year, mm. that their base is very energized now. Why? Because they've been in opposition for a while. The economy is also not helping, and well, nobody knows what's going to happen down the line in the next few months. If they are able to bring that crop of voters who are energized back to the polls, you begin to see, at least the history tells us, the MPP will struggle a bit to get their own supporting base back up, energized. Talk to your people that we know. I mean, NDC folks, MPP folks, traditional voters. They, there's a certain apathy, right, which is what they need to galvanize that base and give them the fire to go back and vote. So how do you fix the problem of bringing two people who are known, known quantities? Can... They galvanize that base. John Mahama maybe can, but can a running mate? And tonight is a night we are talking about Jane and Opoka. Right. Can Jane and Opoka galvanize that base? Let's go to the Shanti region. In the last couple of days, we've seen the press conference and uh, 
some agitation yeah. there. Yeah, rooting for Dr. Dufour. Dr. Dufour to be, to be the running mate. And we know that the NDC needs the Ashanti region. They need to cross a certain uh, percentage. At least 30 percent. At least 30 percent. But also pull the NPP back down uh, to below 75 percent for them to win in the Ashanti region. And so for that to be happening there tells you that it, it may be isolated, mm. but there are a few grumbling voices beginning to emerge on this particular subject. They will have to do something really significant to, to change that outcome. But I believe the eight-year challenge, but also the, the galvanizing of their base, which every eight-year shows that the opposition party can, can deliver that. But the challenge that the MPP also will face in bringing their people to, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the polls on December 7, the people who have now become uh, apathetic, right, may play to the advantage. And the question is whether they can take advantage of that with Jinan Opoku Ajuman on the ticket. And we're still waiting to, for, the, for that live signal from the NDC headquarters. Stay with us because we'll take you live to the NDC headquarters once we have the signal. The party is holding itself in readiness to hold a news conference to announce the choice of the running mate, even though officially they've communicated to the public that the party, the next settled on Professor Nana Jane Opoku Ajiman. So, as again, the question is how. Uh, how, how, how should they go about in terms of getting the rank and file of the party to rally behind this ticket? Because remember that mm. before coming to this announcement, some came out there, some folks in the Bono and Bono East and the Hafo regions, they may declare that uh, John Mahama should select uh, the, uh, Eric Opoku, the member of parliament. And then in the voter region, uh, to where after the name came up, the uh, Asogli uh, traditional authority issue a statement saying that uh, the 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 uh, the Aguma fear has not instructed anybody to lobby on his behalf but he will be willing to play any role in the advancement of the national cause mm. so clearly you're looking at regional you know positions taken on this matter now john mahama decided to go with the ticket he used in 2020. how do they get the rank and file to rally behind this ticket uh, regardless of their individual and regional you know biases one is the extent of consultations done before this announcement. And we know that this isn't a surprise. We had known that John Mama was going to maintain Gina no Pokajman for a while. And if we knew, many within the party would have known too, right? So that is a first. The extent of the consultation that has been done will be important. But also, we're going to be watching the chatter that will be emerging from the party itself, both um, party stores and fringe elements in the party, what they'll be saying at the back of this, considering, considering the um, quiet campaigning that was going on for others, as you mentioned, mm. right? In, in terms of, they have to go back to the voter region, right? And make a case for General Opoku Ajiman, right? But they have a general secretary now who comes from the voter region, who, who himself is, is aligned already. Right. So you can deploy him, right? And as you've seen, he's been very enthusiastic about uh, this announcement for a while. The individual, though, I think will be very important in all this, will be the national chairman, uh, Asiru Nkitia. Mm -hmm. And we knew that the last time he was interested. Right. Right? Where he stands on this will be very, very important because he is a grassroots person. And I've been talking about galvanizing the base. As I've said, historically, the opposition party uh, approaching the, the, the second term of an incumbent seemed to have the... The, the energy among the, the ranks. But you still need more because, of course, you can't take it for granted. That is where you need um, the likes of the national chairman. Mm. How he goes to sell this ticket to the grassroots will be very important. And, and he will, be, will play a key role. I'm looking forward to see what he says about this ticket and the enthusiasm with which he says it. <laughs> I mean... For me, the, the body language of the, of, of the current national chairman, the Asirin uh, will be very key. We know that the, after the general secretary, Fifi Kwete, he's been tweeting about this. He's very excited. You talk to him. He, he, he wants a ticket. So he can sell this to the, to the folks in the Volta region, the stronghold of the party. But what will Asirin Kitea do? His posture, his ability to sell this to the grassroots of the party will be key. But then also, a lot also depends on Jane Nano Pukwa Jiman herself. She needs to be released to go back in there. I can see that. Uh, I can see that uh, the yes, general course. secretary. And we, we need to take you live to the NDC headquarters now. Qualifications 
and experience. And we believe that she brings a wealth of knowledge and expertise to be able to push the agenda of our party and to support the, the flag bearer of our party on the presidential ticket. Now, President, President Mahama expressed confidence in his running mate. Expressed confidence in his running mate and what he said is that he was proud to have Professor Nana Jane Opokwajima as the running mate on account of her integrity, her dedication, her vision for a better Ghana, and she being an ideal candidate to be able to help the party to be able to win this coming election. So we can only ex express our satisfaction and our happiness about this choice. We believe it's a choice that actually will gladden the heart of the people of Ghana, a choice that signals our readiness to go into battle. And we believe that the women of Ghana, the young people of Ghana, all the people of Ghana will rally behind the excellent, His Excellency John Damani Mahama and the running mate, even as December 7 comes, in order for us to be able to de de deliver the necessary victory, not just for this party, but also for the country as a whole. So this is the very short announcement we want to make available to you, to let you know that finally it's out of the bag, you now have the name of the running mate to His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. So NDC's tickets, the top and the second, are ready. In the coming weeks, we'll, we'll be moving ahead to make further announcement regarding uh, other critical issues with our campaign. But we'll accordingly let you know when the time is ready. It should not be too long. Thank you very much. All right, so yes. OK. Any other? Journalists only. You, number two, number three. So, Agogan, help me here. You tell us your name, your media house, then you keep your person cursed. So, 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 you can come this way. Yeah, we are all here. My name is Safi Hanan Adam. I work with the I'd like to find out from the general secretary of the party or leadership of the party what was the criteria for settling on Professor J. Nano as a running mate for the flag bearer of your party in the 2024 general elections. Thank you. Thank you. Is that all? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. So, account stations, don't worry. When we are done, we will grant you interviews on the sidelines. So, don't worry about that. Okay. Now, there is a professor on the report 2020. Oman said that I'm doing this in Central Region of Pay Every Home. And I went to the people who are about eight, and they are what they say will be to my campaign. The flag bearer and the petino, a sitting here, a said professor on the notes. But I'm a witch, I'm a young woman, and you're my own kind. Who consider here 
All right, thank you. So, Jesus, I'm sure Jesus will take some, and if the national chairman has to come in, he will. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Uh, I think the questions are one, what's the criteria? What are the criteria we use? Uh, what other names came up? Uh, whether this is just a short term uh, interest of the party? And uh, what difference will she make? Uh, because she had, she had been on the ticket in, in, the, in the previous year, I think, in the previous election, is that it? And then uh, I think the final one is about grassroots uh, having issues regarding what the age. I think that's what the, that's what the, the issue, whether she was popular enough in the age. Anyway, so let me, let's, let's try to take them uh, one after the other. Uh, first and foremost, the criteria. Uh, according to our party's constitution, the flag bearer of the party makes that nomination and consults with the Council of Elders of the party and the National Executive Committee of the party. So that should be the number one. You cannot get through unless that process is gone through. That's the first one. Now, what criteria are we looking at? In fact, I'm thinking the case of Professor Nana Jane. We've already gone through all the rigorous criteria in the past. So this is not like a new candidate who is now going to what, be examined for the first time. Effectively, she has gone through every rigorous examination, not just at the level of the party, but also at the level of the country. So you obviously see that to be an advantage. It's not like a new person who now we are going to be wondering what's going to be happening. Are there going to be some issues that we are not aware about? Are there some issues that the media is going to bring regarding maybe her level of integrity and stuff of that nature? So clearly in terms of criteria, she obviously has met the highest possible criteria as far as the party is concerned and also as far as the country is concerned. But if you want a little more, simple. Uh, we're talking about a running man who obviously has got integrity. And I think there is no dispute about that. A running mate who, as opposed to another running mate that we have seen, is not going to be a complete, completely discredited individual whose word cannot be trusted, who absolutely is an epitome of lies, of deception. It's going to be an epitome of, of honor. And that is critical, especially after seven years of having seen the most discredited running mate in the history of our country. It's critical for us to make sure the person we are bringing matches that level in terms of supersedes that level of integrity, supersedes that level of credibility, has honor, has credibility, and can be trusted by the country. So uh, in terms of that criteria, I would say her competence is not in doubt, her credibility is not in doubt, her character is not in doubt, and the people of Ghana clearly are looking for an individual that can be trusted and they are running mates, represent that individual who clearly can be way, 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 way more trusted than the flag bearer of our main opposition that all, all, all of you know is just an epitome of complete uh, lack of credibility. So that is the criteria that we look at. A competence, a character, a capacity, a loyalty, not just to the flag bearer, but to the party and to the country. And she, she, she passes all that with flying colors. Uh, names that were uh, presented. The flower is supposed to make a, an announcement to us in terms of the presentation of the name that he has chosen. And that actually is what happened today. So the flower came, this is my choice. So then the Council of Elders listened to that. Opinions are therefore brought. At the end of the day, the Council of Elders then op I mean, brings out their view as to that. On the back of that, we now move to the National Executive Committee and do exactly the same process. So it's one clear name that the flag bearer brought. There's really no need for any additional name at all. There's no one ambiguity about it. He was clear in his mind. And I think the, the response from both the Council of Elders and the National Executive Committee shows there is clear unanimity as far as that name is concerned. So in terms of names, that is about it. Now, is this in the long-term interest of the party or short-term interest? I'm not really too sure. Uh, about where exactly this question is coming from. We have an election to win, and we are going ahead to win that election. It's not our responsibility to be, we cannot, we cannot divine into the future. You understand what I mean? You know exactly the very fleeting nature of life. 
I mean, many of you just heard the news, for example, of a young politician who just, po who just passed away, poison. You never know what life holds for tomorrow. So you focus on today. The most important thing ahead of us now is the election ahead of us, and we are focusing on that. Uh, what difference does she bring? I mean, the difference she brings is, is simple. That if the people of Ghana in 2020 were not even sure at the time about the level of credibility she has, I think over the last four years, in addition to the previous four of the MPP, they have seen the reason why it is critical to have an individual who, above all, can be trusted by the country. So the difference she brings is that she is absolutely somebody Ghana can trust. It's somebody who can step in when the president is not available and do that job knowing that she loves this country and she will do what is right. And that is what we have constantly done for this country. We always present individuals who clear the mark of integrity, the mark of competence. We can't say the same about our opponents, uh, especially if you've seen the recent uh, one that they have presented, both, both the driver and the mate, absolute disaster, absolute liability in both of them. So uh, regarding those four, I think those are the, the quick, quick answers I, 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 I can provide here. Yeah. Okay, your question is also in P, I suppose, right? Your question is also in P. I will address you later when we are done in P, so don't worry. Please, 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 please. We, we, I think the general secretary has already answered this question, so no need to belabor the point. He has told you the consideration that went into the selection of the running mate and why there is unanimity, both at the level of the Council of Elders and the National Executive Committee, on our running mate for the 2024 elections. And so, on that note, and with the permission of the National Chairman and the General Secretary, I would like to thank you very much for coming. We thank our hard-working Chairman for assisting regions. All our assisting regional Chairmen are here in their numbers. Please a round of applause for them. A round of applause for them. So I'd like to thank members of FEC here, members of NEC. You are all duly acknowledged. And thank you, our friends in the media. The conversation will continue. We'll continue to engage you. And if you have any questions, our doors are always open. You can always reach out to us. And we'll be happy to share with you the official responses of the party. Oh, I'm told that all the 16 regional women This is your election headquarters, Joy News. So it's official. I mean, from every corner, it is official. And Professor Nana Jane Opokwajiman is running mate to John Mahama. That's the NDC's ticket for election 2024, uh, holding on December 7, 2024. It says John Mahama and Professor Nana Jane Opokwajiman. That's the NDC's ticket that they are presented to Ghanaians for election 2024. And where do we have uh, John Mahama's response? Uh, he, he, he posted uh, some few minutes ago, and we can go through that. For you, he says, I'm proud to have Professor Nana Jane Opoku Ajimam uh, as my running mate. Her integrity, dedication, and vision for a better Ghana make her the ideal candidate to join me in leading our party to victory in the upcoming uh, elections. And that is coming from uh, John Dramani Mahama. Evan Spencer is still here with me, he's head of our political desk. And before I bring you in, uh, we, this is from John Mahama. And there is an acceptance statement also coming from Professor uh, Jane Opokwajman. And she says, today, I received the news of my confirmed selection as a running mate to His Excellency John Damani Mahama, flag bearer and leader of the NDC, an incoming president of the Republic of Ghana with profound humility and great honor. It is worthy of note that 
This is the second time former President John Mahama has nominated me as his running mate. I express my eternal gratitude to him. By this choice, our flag bearer has demonstrated remarkable consistency an unwavering commitment to inclusivity and innovation, and an inspiration belief in the Ghanaian woman. I wish to convey my heartfelt appreciation to the NDC, Council of Elders, the National Executive Committee, the rank and file of our party friends, well wishes, and indeed all Ghanaians, for the overwhelming support and endorsement that I have received today. I'm not one to take lightly. The confidence reposed in me, neither am I oblivious of the national decay and widespread despondency in our beloved country. I express my absolute readiness and commitment to partner His Excellency John Domani Mahama to serve the people of Ghana with integrity, dignity, truthfulness, hard work, and patriotism to reposition our dear country as a beacon of hope and opportunity. And she ends by saying, I have no doubt in my mind that we can count on His Excellency John Mahama to give us a selfless, incorruptible, visionary, inclusive leadership that Ghana urgently need to transform the fortunes of Ghanaians. I shall give this noble tax everything in me. And this is from Professor J. Nana Opoku Ajiman, running mate of the NDC. Evans, before I bring you in, just uh, let, let me cross over to the other side. Uh, Professor Joshua Labi joins me in via Zoom. Prof, you welcome to the pause here on Joy News. And it's all right, so we, we can listen to him now. Right, so we'll bring that to you uh, pretty shortly. But Evans, I mean, everything is out of the bag now. Uh, we, we, we've heard from John Maham, we've heard from uh, the professor herself. It's all well and good for NDC going forward in 2020. So what happens from this moment on? Well, it's important just to go back to the statement that the, uh, the presidential candidate himself just put out that he's expecting that Jane Nanopokajima will help him win the latest elections. And I'm pretty sure we're waiting for a lot of reactions from our colleagues on the ground there. But that was important. That really is what it comes down to, to win the elections this year. Uh, and, and, she, and he believes Jane, Professor Jane Nopokajima, will help him do that. And just been analyzing this on our screens that Professor Jane Nopokajima brought momentum back to the ticket in 2020. And you see the graph here that tells a story. We've analyzed that already. But that, that here is the momentum and the climb that you see with this arrow that I'm just indicating there. And because of where they were in 2016, she got on the ticket and, and got them back on the right track. And John Mahama, and this is the presidential, by the way, got, John Mahama looks at that, although they, they lost the presidential mm. in the central region to the current president, there was momentum back. Because I want to show you the next graph, which tells that story. Whereas, yes, Nalado Dankwa Kufado won in the central region. And this is where she hails from. If she has a constituency, it is in the central region. And so you're going back to that constituency to look at what she can bring to the ticket. If you listen to what your mama is saying about fundamentally why she put her up as a running mate today is because I want to win elections. The last time she was on the ticket, this is what panned out between the two main parties at the presidential level. Yes, John Mahama uh, lost in the central region, but if you see the gap there, the gap there had been closing. And, it, and I talk about momentum. Momentum is everything in politics. You're moving from one election to the next. You need to analyze very carefully. Where do you have momentum? Traditionally, in political strategy, if you identify momentum, you don't change the factors. You want to keep the factors the same. Right. Evans, just one second. Let, let, let me take you back to the NDC headquarters where my colleague, Ebe Fapa, who is engaging the general secretary of the party, Fifi Kwete. The campaign team, actually, the, it will come out with a campaign structure and the team. That, that, that will happen just after we, do the, we finish the unveiling of the flower bearer, of the, of the running mate. They will come out with the campaign team. Then after that, we'll announce our campaign calendar as well was a charge to this new running mate in terms of what she would add to this particular campaign. I'm sure in the consideration as well, there was some form of expectation that the party also put before her in terms of what you're expecting her. I mean, the same, the same thing would expect of any, anyone who is uh, supposed to be helping the flat bearer. Effectively, work very hard, uh, secure, secure as much votes in the key demographics among women, among youth, especially students, in the central region, bring bring uh, that um, 
that call it that addition that the flat better may not have in order for us to be able to to work hard towards that. To be honest with you, what we saw in the year 2020, that experience, she definitely was going to do even better than we got in 2020. So we are pretty confident. Yeah. Okay. We'll leave it here for now. I'm sure we'll get to interact. And um, that's, uh, that's about it in terms of um, the, the official announcement of Professor Nana Jane Opokwajiman as the running mate for Professor uh, for John Dramani Mahama uh, right here. I'm sure bringing Ken uh, whilst we, we wrap up uh, from the NDC headquarters um, today. And uh, the announcement has officially been made. And uh, there's some expectations uh, from the party, uh, from the graphics and So obviously we'll have more reaction going forward, but Evans, you were concluding on what the party must do from this moment on. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and again, my point I was making has just been re-emphasized by the General Secretary, that if we look at her performance on the ticket, um, and you're looking at the ticket, if you look at the ticket as a package, right? Whatever the party secures an election, both gentlemen, and in this case, the gentleman and the lady on that ticket, they take equal blame for it, mm. of course. But you have to give more to the John Mahama than you give to her in terms of, because he is on the ballot when you go to vote. But he makes a point that based on her performance on the ticket in the last elections, and this is in 2020, they believe she will do far better. Uh, that's quoting the general secretary. And I'm saying that the evidence suggests that there is momentum. She brought momentum back uh, to the ticket. And I was making the very important cardinal strategic point when it comes to politics and elections. When you identify momentum, you don't change the factors. You keep the factors constant, which is really what John Mahama had done. Because he sees the momentum, as you see here, from 2016, 2016 to 2020. Um, they were down significantly in, in 2016. And that's the arrow there, down. And refreshed the ticket, brought in... Of course, uh, tragically, uh, the party lost the uh, Pakwisi Mr. Arthur, and they had to bring somebody else into the picture. And they brought her into the picture, and we've seen that climb, that momentum that they've had at the presidential level. Yes, they lost in the presidential elections in the central region, and this is all around the central region you're talking about, because that's their constituency. They lost there presidentially, but as the graph shows, that gap narrowed from the 2016 to 2020, and that is what you see here. That gap narrowed uh, significantly. That is a momentum question I'm talking about. And then you see also that play out uh, in the parliamentary also. It, it wasn't just a question of momentum, they flipped it. They flipped it on his head from a 19 down to 13 up. Again, with hair on the ticket in the central region. And that fundamentally is the reason why she has been maintained uh, this time round. You don't want to change the factors when you have momentum. And the factor in this case, one of the very important factors in this case is who your running mate is for the NDC. And John Mahama has decided that, well, I want to improve on the momentum. I want that momentum to continue. Myself, I have been maintained. Right. So that feeds into that momentum strategy. Why do I change my running mate is a key question. But... The fundamental question that a game must be asked is, JM has one term, right? right? JM has one term. After, the, after JM, if he wins, mm -hmm. they will have to bring an entirely new face. Right. The key central question to ask, is this decision for the short term or is JM playing the long game? The long card. In, in politics, especially when you have a term to go, you begin to think about long term if you're thinking about parties sustainability and party's continuity and party growth. The jury's still out. If indeed Jane Nana Poka, because she'll be marketed of for course. two terms right. now. In 2024, is she, will she grow enough to be in a position to be the face of the NDC, to challenge whoever the MPP will bring? We know, regardless of what happens, the current vice president will be, will be there or there about some war. We don't know what's going to happen, but he's going to be there or there about some war. Is Jane Nanopoku Ajuman, with the future, the long-term future of the party in mind, the right person, if you're playing the long game? That is the question that the party will have to answer. Because they're coming into this, I have said, that if JM wanted to play the long game, then the person that you put there as your running mate will be a signal to where you want the party to be after you. True. Right? And, and so is he telling us that he, want, he wants to give Jane Nanopoku Ajuman being the first woman 
to possibly become the presidential candidate of one of the two main parties in 2024? Those are big questions that we'll have to analyze going forward. All right, thank you very much, Evan. I'm sure that in the minutes and hours to come, we'll have more time to digest what we've been fed by the NDC. And of course...